Welcome to Earth to the Other Side. I'm your host, John Glasspool. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Tonight's episode is actually not on NDEs. Uh, yes, we do touch on it a little bit here and there. And of course, my guest, Bill McDonald, uh, did have uh, NDEs in the past and has written several books on this matter. And um, really interesting guy. Tonight, we're going to actually speak about two different things. One is self-healing. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the workshops that he is going to be conducting in various cities and the other thing the second thing which you really need to stick around and watch and listen to the oneness the theory of one and um, how we are all one all part of oneness this will be fully uh, explained by Bill uh, I hope you guys stick around to the end and watch this and I hope if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do um, trying to grow this channel so that I can do this full time and bring you tons and tons more content. Thank you so much. Blessings to all of you and uh, enjoy the episode. Hey, welcome back to the show, Reverend Bill McDonald. So nice to have you back. What have you been up to? Oh, it, it, I mean, it's been, it's my life. Everything is, is interesting, but it's just starting to percolate again in my life. And I think it's parallel to a lot of people. They could probably relate to this. It was a pause, like you're living your life to a certain point with your marriage, with your children, with your life, with your job, with stuff. And then everything kind of ground down to what I call a period of reflection. We all had this time out to say, what in the hell am I doing here? What's going on? Did this, did this have any value in my life? Why am I wasting my time doing this? Do I really need to go around the world doing this? Do I really need this? Does the world really need another book? Does the world need whatever? You need people that are still searching. My message is for people still searching. I, I still want to feed people that are hungry. And a lot of old people reach a certain point in time and they go, this is it. I'm in the box. I ain't getting out. This is my religious beliefs. This is my philosophical beliefs. And it, is, and it is in the book, and it says this. There's nothing else. I, I can't hear it. Don't tell me. Uh, so now I'm teaching what I call self-healing therapy uh, that I've developed uh, because I've learned these various techniques from all kinds of unique, interesting people in the world. They realize growing up, my influence was Paramahansa Yogananda and uh, – one of the teachings of the precepts of that is Yogananda had you prepare yourself for meditation. You would do these, what they call recharging exercises, which was dynamic tension. You know, you tense up, you bring energy, you, you visualize energy going in, you visualize energy going out. And people, especially Westerners, they didn't realize that that was a huge thing that I discovered early. I go, well, you know, this thing's more than just, you know, flexing your muscles, if you really are innerly focused and open to that energy, this visualization is much greater than just visualization in your imagination. I mean, you're really, truly bringing in a current of energy. And so I learned something when I was really young through dreams and uh, out-of-body experiences. Um, and, and I'm going to be sharing that in my workshops. But I, I learned the value in using that. And then I applied it to what I learned later on when I was a, a teenager and I moved to Hawaii and met uh, a kahuna, David K. Bray, who was the intimate. I mean, this guy was the, the man. I mean, he, would, he was in Hollywood movies playing, playing a guru and, and, a, and a kahuna and all that kind of stuff, right? So I mean, anyway, this guy was the guy that everybody from around the world came to. He was the... He was the the highest, you know, priestess kind of guy, you know. And I, I knew nothing about the Kuna religion uh, when I first got to Hawaii. And then I met this guy and uh, I go, wow. This, at the time, I didn't value what he was teaching me. Being 18, he was 60-some, yeah, this old guy teaching me this stuff. Because every time somebody come to him a problem and I'm there while he's counseling these people and stuff, his thing was always... You know, they're having trouble with their wife. They're having trouble with their kid. They're having trouble with the boss. What would he always do? Love yourself. The guy goes, well, it's not me. It's it. He goes, focus on yourself. Love you. 
work on you, forgive you, be grateful. And that was his way. And at the time I'm going, yeah, well, that's kind of frivolous. I mean, it's kind of like, you might as well put a bumper sticker, love yourself, put a bumper sticker on you. But it was years later when I discovered, well, oh, that's the other element I need. I take this recharging energy. Now I take this love yourself, forgive yourself, gratitude. Huh. And then I went to India. Uh, my trip in 2002, four, 2004, that trip. And I met some people that were off the charts. You know, wandering around the Himalayas, people that just had strange conversations with me. Uh, interesting, supernatural things. I mean, that's another whole show. But things happened. And, and then I started doing things. I, I took that little bit, and then I married it with what I learned from Yogananda, with the recharging. And then I married it with what I learned in Hawaii from uh, there's a, I mean, that's a well-known technique that, that's coming alive now. People are practicing this Hawaiian thing all by itself. But I take these elements from that, from, from that, and I use that as a body, but I also incorporate the recharging, you know, visualization of energy and all the chakras and all that. And then the, the spice, the extra spices that I learned in the Himalayas that go, there's one other thing you got to do. And I'm going to be sharing that in my workshops. Uh, people coming to my, my workshop in Santa Cruz uh, this September, next weekend, actually, September 10th. I'll be doing these events free, free healing workshops across country. So what am I doing? I'm going back out there now because people need healing. But people think of healing, they always think physical. Yes, Part of this will be physical healing, but that's not my target. My target really is spiritual and emotional healing. The body will follow. All the root of all diseases is spiritual illness. You're out of whack. You're, you're, you're not in sequence with your spiritual DNA. We are all healers. And what I want to do is teach people the value of self-healing Everybody's looking for the answer that is outside of themselves. They're looking for a teacher. They're looking for a guru. They're looking for sage. They're looking for kahuna. They're looking for somebody out there that's going to rescue them. Right? They're all looking for a spiritual lifeguard. And I'm trying to say, there's nothing outside of you. It's all here already. Belief is the gasoline of this healing motor. And when belief becomes a knowing, so there's a big difference between believing and knowing. But you, by exercising your belief muscles, little steps at a time, uh, you get stronger. And when you say, I am healthy, or I am love, or I am peaceful, or whatever, whatever you throw after I am becomes very, very powerful because you believe that. That's why I, I tell my friends in, in very successful 12-step programs, very successful. I love the, the organization. It's blessed by God himself. It's helped save thousands and millions of people. But I would like to tell these people in that at some point in time, you got to stop saying, I am an alcoholic. I am a drug addict. I am dependent. I am whatever it is that they're from, whatever it is. You have to step up and say I am love, I'm peace, I'm God, I'm healthy. So if you keep identifying with your weakness, you identify with the weakness. That's, you still retain that. Not that an alcoholic can now say, oh, I'm no longer an alcoholic. No, you, the tendency's there, the seed's there. I understand the concept of what they're trying to do, so I would advise anybody not to do that. But I'm just saying there's a next step after that. They talk about 12 steps. I'm saying there's a 13th step where you become your self-healer, where you become the I am love. And the rest of it fades away. But most people don't, you know, they're, if they're not ready to get there, great. So, so that's my new thing now. I'm starting with Santa Cruz. Uh, I'm going to be going to Sacramento, which is just up the road here. I'll do something there. I'm looking at Encinitas and Los Angeles and 
that the power uh, that I'm trying to awaken is it is in you already. And when you recognize that, then you will take charge of your life. People go out there and, oh, the, 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 the astrology chart says this. I'm destined to do this and this and that. Everything is, but I'm going, no. Every day you wake up with the power to change who you are, what you're doing. Now, there may be some influences, the astrology people will argue with me, that make it difficult. You know, this is in your way. And, you know, when the seventh health is in line with Mars and all that, I go, okay, great. I never pay attention to that. I just do what I'm going to do anyway. Yeah, some days a little harder. But you know what? The willpower and the belief system and uh, your connection with the light. That is the greatest power in the world. And all that gets down to one basic concept, going down and simplifying things. I simplify everything. What do you believe in? I said, I believe in one. One. One what? No, one. One what? No. It's all one. Oneness. Place, time. No. It's one. There is not you. There is not me. There is one. We are one. And People don't get that concept. I mean, and then some people philosophically can get it. Yeah, philosophically. But let's get let's get real. If you got a if you got a human body, which we both do, I'm assuming, and uh, we, we still have an ego, meaning when I say ego, I'm not talking about egotistical, you know, I'm talking about you believe in the I-ness of yourself. In other words, you have a history, you have thoughts, you have a life you have experiences, you still have an I. And as long as you got an I, that means you got an ego, right? Or the ego creates the I, right? And if you have an ego and an I in this thing, you also have to have some kind of body. Now, at this material level, we got human flesh or whatever that is, and we're in this material world, so therefore. Since we believe in the I and our history and everything, therefore, we, we, we believe we're born. We believe we live. We believe we have pain. We believe we have suffering. We believe we have death. We believe we go to heaven or hell or whatever. We have reincarnation because we believe all that. None of that's real. What? Reverend Bill, you're so, oh, sacrilege. Oh, my gosh. Uh, what? What? Yes, it don't. There's, there's no reincarnation. What, what? I've heard your talks. You talk about I said, there's not even an incarnation. What? I said, none of this. You're not born. Therefore, you can't die. There is no heaven. There is no hell because you never was. You never were. You only are. What? What are you talking about? Anyway, it's a concept that's, that's hard to sell. And it doesn't matter if you accept it or not. Things still happen for you, right? It's like. I don't believe in gravity. Well, good luck with that. It believes in you, right? So it's the same thing with whatever the truth is. It doesn't matter. Everybody thinks they know the truth. And uh, it's it's like, who moved the cheese? Oh, you know, when you get older, you go, that's not true anymore. Life is a series of those discoveries. You realize, oh, what I thought at 18 years old is not the same thing at 38 or 50 or 70 or it's 76 like I'm at. I don't think the same as I did last week. Not even too sure that I think the same way I thought when I went to bed last night. So it's an evolving process. I'm not coming to the, I'm not inviting them to the banquet without any food to give them. There's also a little energy boost for them. There's also this buy-in between two souls. Uh, there's this melding of, of energy together. When you get a dozen people together, three dozen people together, which is a good number. I like that. Four dozen, three dozen. Those are nice numbers. That's a nice size group. It's like connecting a string of batteries. You know, one battery is one battery, but you add a second battery, it's actually a little bit more than two batteries together. It's, and if you got 36 batteries hooked together. You really got a powerful group. It's powerful for everybody. So their belief, their energy, their, and, if, and, if I, and if I do the workshop right, I bring them, 
I educate them for a period of three, four hours till I get them to a point of, of willingly accepting what I'm giving them, the techniques. And at that point, their openness opens the door to all the energy around them. And so it's like, yeah, self-healing, but it's also a group healing. There's no time, there's no space, right? So everything's in the now. So if you really believe that, that believes when I do these workshops individually, even though they may be months apart and halfway around the globe from each other, there's no time and there's no space. It's all happening at once. And that's what I want to tap into. It's always happening. Everything's happening now. Even yesterday is happening now. So they, that's because they have an i mm-hmm. They went there. They were still them. And, and me and you, if we go there, they're still us. We still have a body. And if the body is a body of light, it doesn't make any difference. So, no, the concept is exactly the same. If you experience heaven, hell, all these things, that's your experience in the in in the inus. The inus. Yeah. So, and that's why people around the world, culturally wise, uh, not everybody has the same kind of uh, near death experience. There's different religious experiences that happen, different beliefs. You know, some people expect to see their dead dog and their grandmother and their old friend greet them, and you know, uh, and somebody else. It's like it's crazy. It's all over the place. It doesn't say these things weren't. That's as real as death or life or birth. But I'm saying none of those things are real. So it's whatever reality you want to make it. You believe it. And you have no choice but to believe it because you accepted the I. This You believe in you. And I'm telling you that you and I, and I am just like they are. I have a body. I have an I-ness. So I'm talking uh, <laughs> theoretically here because if I die, if I've made my mind if I want to be in, uh, when I die, I will. Ha- I still have my my identity. If I still have my identity, then I will have an experience of some kind. Uh, whether you're an angel or you become a being of light, or if you floating around or whatever it is, you know. Whatever, you still have some kind of body, even if it's a body of light. And this could go on, again, there's no time. This could go on trillions of years. Uh, I mean, you're happy, right? You know, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm me. I remember who I was, but I'm just loving the light thing here, you know. Eventually, the soul wakes up, goes, no, I am Now, you got crazy people out there who says, I'm God. They think they're God. I mean, we're not talking that. We're talking a total immersion. We're talking about an awakening, the ultimate awakening. Not, oh, before I was awoke, before I was awakened, before I was enlightened. That's all glimpses. They're all pieces. They're still pieces of the I-ness. It's your experience, and you tell it as a personal experience. You know, it's like, well, this happened. You pop in as the observer. Yeah. So uh, it's all great philosophy, and it doesn't matter if any of that is real, whatever reality is. I tell people, forget all the philosophy. You go crazy. Why are we here? What are we doing? You know, yeah. Just focus on the basic precept of all religions. And what is that? Love. And all religions seem to move the needle past that into all this dogma and all these other belief systems. And you got to do this and you got to do that, you know, and you got to go through all this ritual, pujas, masses, prayers, all that stuff. And you know what? God don't care because God is you. It's all one. It's like, if you love you, going back to the Hawaiian teachings, if you love you, who are you really loving? Loving God, the God within you. And when you love the God within you, then you realize the God's in all. So when you love you, you really love everybody because God is in everything. There's nothing that anybody can show me that's not God. God is everything. So 
in the most simplified terms, because I'm really into the one and I'm into simplification. You know, what's your religious beliefs? Love. What? What love? My sacraments are service with kindness. What? What? Anyway, it's just about love. Now, anything else you want to fill in there, like you want to do the rosary beads and you want to, you know, bow to, to you know, some, some god or goddess or you want to worship whatever you want to worship and you want to believe whatever you want to believe. You know what? If it makes you happy, do it. If it brings you joy and peace, if it makes you a better person, do it. But what you're doing, don't judge the guy that's doing something different. <clears throat> well, he's, he's praying differently than I'm praying. <clears throat> Therefore, he's wrong. I'm right. We go through life looking at differences, <clears throat> differences in people, differences in beliefs. And this is what gets our world into problems. <clears throat> so politics, countries, religions, it's always about differences. Instead of us focusing on what's the same, we all need to have love in our life. We need to express it. The God in us wants to express the true sacrament, love for all. It's not like, well, we love this guy, but this guy is a different, he's a different religion, different country. Uh, he, they're bad people. We're good people. Oh, this guy's a red state guy. This guy's a blue state guy. Whew, can't. None of that. You either love your brother and your sister as one, or you don't. You can't separate it. Now, you don't have to like everyone or like what everyone does or chooses to, to do and belief and everything. But you got to love it because you're loving God. But it doesn't necessarily mean because you don't like them. Like, to tell people they got relatives, you know, like, oh, the hell yeah. I said, look, you got to love your relatives, but you don't have to like them. <clears throat> you don't have to hang around with them. Because I, I was counseling somebody the other day, and they're having all these problems with their relatives, <clears throat> relatives judging them and doing this to them and all that. And, uh, and I asked him a simple question. I said, <clears throat> if you met your relatives at a bus station or on an airplane sitting next to you in a seat and you talked to them, would you ever want to talk to them again? Would you want to, would you want to be friends with them? Would they interest you enough to be involved in your life? Probably most people would say no. I, I, no, I wouldn't. I, if they weren't related to me, I'd never see them. I'd never visit them. I'd never give a second thought. But if you're at a level where everybody's related to you, there's nobody that's not. It changes the whole thing. You know, to heck with physical genetics. Spiritual DNA says we're all one. It all goes back to the one. Always makes me wonder, though, <clears throat> you know, when you factor in the Hitlers and the Trumps. Uh, no offense to any uh, Trump fans, but you know what I mean. Like, I get that it's all part of the experience, but it's it's hard to swallow when you think that's also God. You know. No, that's uh, again. Let's take Hitler. You you, you got to love him because he's God's in there. But my God, you don't want to like him. You, you don't want to aid and abet that. You certainly don't want to be hanging around him. So there's discrimination because you still identify with the body and the self and the I. <clears throat> Therefore, you identify with the material world with suffering and pain and, and everything goes with it. And the world we live in, we identify others. Well, I'm telling you, there are no others. What? What? There's no others. The whole world, it's, it's within you. And if you want to get really crazy, are, is each one of us dreaming a different world? Is, is each one of us have a different reality? If, you know, it's, we've created our own reality. So you can go crazy on that too, but it doesn't matter. Bottom line, 
wake up in the morning. Your intentions for the day are to love and serve. And if you do that every day, and then make time, make time during the early morning hours, late at night, during the day, whenever, make time to communicate the love for all to the one. There's so much hate and anger out there that serves no purpose. You're never going to get the other side to change and to buy into your views if you've demonized them. Uh, and then there's a time and a place where there's accountability. If you do such and such, such and such is going to happen. It's called karma because we believe in this world. We believe in karma. And, you know, we can sit there and go, oh, these guys are getting away with that. And this, that. And I'm going, nobody gets away with nothing. In the end, the truth will be known. In the end, people pay their dues. The dues, you know, they're knocking on the door. This bill is due. If you do X, X, and X, it adds up to this. And uh, it's not up to us. Unless that's your job. You know, you're, you know, you're the judge. Or, but, you know, for, for daily life, it's not our job to judge other people and make sure they're arrested and they're tried and they're convicted and, and the, the, all these terrible people are punished. Because it's interesting, the people that you want to punish, they're looking at you being a super liberal, going, man, you're killing babies. You're doing this. You're doing that. You guys are communists. And, and, and so if they had their way, they would put you in jail and this guy would put you in jail. And I'm going, that's all craziness. At some point, everybody's got to wake up and say, there is no red and blue there is no two americas there's no multiple th it's all one when you die you're just in another material it's not the material world but it's another world it's another dimension it's another it's another inus whether it's the astral world and you call it heaven it's a, a causal world it's a you know whatever it is it's still something as long as it's something, it's not fully recognized itself as one. So just because you die and you shed yourself in this body doesn't mean you're fully enlightened. <laughs> it's like, I mean, because you still think, here I am, I'm observing all this. Here, here I am, therefore I am. I have a history. I was this. I was reincarnated. Now I'm an angel. Now I'm this. No. No. And you run into other parts of yourself, other parts of the one doing the same thing. So it all looks real. Like, oh, well, the cosmos is real. And what happens to this cosmos when we all wake up? Well, God is already awake. The fact that they're, they're still, even if they're an observer, it's, it's just a shades of awakening. Mm -hmm. They're still not. Oneness. They still haven't dissolved the lines. Right. So, I mean, people are having beautiful experiences, experiences. Now, if you're the one, there's no experiences. There's everything is just one, right? Mm -hmm. So it's concept. People keep going back. Well, there's heaven, there's hell, there's this, there's angels, there's this. And then you, and I'm going, I'm not arguing with you. On the material level or the level of the I-ness, all that is happening. It's your reality. I'm telling you that that is your reality but it's not the one reality. And, and they go, oh, well, you know, I, well, I, I experienced this when I had near-death experience. I go, well, that's great. For you, it was real. I'm not arguing with you. But you're still half asleep. You're not fully, you haven't opened the door. You're still outside wandering around the house. You haven't gone inside, you know. <laughs> so not denying these beautiful things. Beautiful things happen. And there's angels out there, and there's beams of light, and there's beautiful, wonderful things happening, but it's all at the level of thought, mind, and whatever you want to call it on the other side, because it's not mind and thinking anymore, but it, there's this process going on, observations and you know things, and you're still identifying as this soul. And most people's concept is, I'll die. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm still going to retain my, I'm still me. I'm this soul walking around with my mother and dad and my dog. And, you know, we're going to, you know, the pearly gates. And I mean, people, they don't get the concept. 
but that reality exists someplace because that will happen to people because they believe it so it will manifest that will be their reality they'll go to like a heaven kind of place and they'll be there to, to wait to reincarnate and i'm trying to tell you there's no nothing to reincarnate because you didn't incarnate in the first place now People are going to throw me under the bus and go, oh, this is wacko, crazy. You know, I don't know. No, look, this stuff is, this happened to me. And I go, no arguments. That happened to you. Great. Happened to that guy. Great. Not denying. I'm just telling you, because you believe in you, that is your reality. No, that's, you get this big circle. People, either they get the concept on that or not. So basically, I'm doing a workshop or I'm talking to people. It's not something that's, it's not important. How many angels on ahead of a pin? Who cares? Who cares? Right? It's not important. Right? Well, here's what it says in the, this scripture. And this is what it says. My question to them is, who'd you love today? How'd you serve? Because no matter what belief system you have, a daily dose of love and service to others. It's always remedies whatever problem you got. It's it's a fix. It's your life, your life, your reality will be better. So as long as you're identifying with the self, then I tell people, well, if you identify with this body, then you take care of it. You make sure you're not eating, you know, bacon for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and ice cream and pie and all that stuff and Coca-Cola and you never eat any vegetables. Come on, you're gonna get sick, right? So you take care of the body, right? And you exercise and all that. And uh you got to take care of the mind. You don't throw garbage in there, pornography and trash and violence and terrible things and thoughts and, you know, feed your mind good stuff, loving things, right? And, and, and then emotionally, you want to be at peace with the world and peace with others. And you want to do serenity type things. You want to surrender to the peace of the universe. So you take care of your body, your mind, your soul. Because you are an I. And until you resolve that, you need to nurture all these parts yourself. Eventually, you'll be a body of light. You'll be floating around in the heavens and the cosmos. You may be off in far distant worlds and planets and cosmos and universes and everything else. And you know what? That will be your reality. It's not a matter of when you wake up or if you wake up because there's no time, right? So everybody already in a future in a future time, quote unquote, in a future time, you and I are beings of light getting ready to make that final transition. We're already there. This is past memory that a trillion years from now you look back and go, I remember when I thought I was this John guy talking to this crazy Reverend Bill. Yeah, I remember. You still have the inus, right? Yeah, but I've tra I've, I've transitioned from that now. I'm, right? And then you wake up and you realize one day that you're not even John. John never existed. Bill never existed. These are concepts that just I'm, I'm, I'm throwing it out there lightly, but people don't get it because they'll argue with you. No, there is a heaven. No, there is reincarnation. No, I, I died and 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 I saw the operating table and I did this and that. I said, yes, you did. Because you're part of this belief system. You're separate from your true self. And then there's a part of me that goes, wait a minute. You can never really be separate from your true self because everything's only one. So it's, it's all just a thought. It's all just, it's all an illusion because nobody's really separate either. Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, all these guys, they reached a certain level. Now, what level is that? Let's say we got a million levels of this enlightenment. They're certainly up there someplace, right? Or within. Well, the thing is, you say, I'm going to blow your mind up. Buddha, Jesus, I throw these guys out there. Well, they're, they're this. We've separated them and made them. We've taken and made them different than us. I'm telling you that the Buddha is you. Jesus is you. Whether you got Buddha consciousness, Jesus conscious, Christ conscious, doesn't make any difference. They are not out there or out there. 
It's all here. When Buddha did that, we did that. The higher oneness did that. You understand that? It's and as we as a dreamlike species, whatever you want to call us, this dream world we're in, as the Buddhas and the Jesuses kind of rotate out, we as a group of souls now we're coming down a different level of, of awareness. Because I'm talking about the ultimate awareness. None of this is real. But let's get down to this material world. In this material world, we periodically have great souls come through, get trailblaze for us and say, hey, here's a path. Jesus gave his life and said, you know, hey, there's no higher service than to give you life for someone else and forgiveness. What a message. True. Right? And, and Buddha come through and said, I give up my kingdoms, my gold, my jewels, sex, everything. I don't need it. I just need, boom. I love my brothers, right? Hey, we're all one. So these souls come periodically to in, inhabit our material world so we can see them in the flesh and the blood. Okay? And then they go from flesh and blood to something beyond. How far beyond, we cannot in the human mind judge because you're still judging from the mind of a human. You can't judge that. It's like, you know, who knows? So, but as they evolve individually, if there's such a thing and there's not, it appears they evolve individually. But they really, in their evolutionary process, have pulled the energy of all of us to a higher place. But we are all prisoners, for lack of a better term. We're all prisoners here on this spiritual timeshare. <laughs> with, 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 what an illusion. I own that building. That's my apartment. Yeah, you only got it for a week. All right. This is a soul, right? You're in this body. You only own it for a week, man. Come on. It's not you, right? So... The landlord's going to get out of here. So we, we're living in this illusion that we live, we age, we die. We go back, we regenerate, we learn things in heaven. We come back again with this karma. Well, you know what? You wouldn't have any karma if you didn't believe in karma. I mean, but that's like the guy that doesn't believe in gravity. I mean, it's more than just, I don't believe in gravity. I mean, you got to be able to overcome gravity. So I'm telling you, you have to be able to overcome this. And it just stopped. Well, I don't believe in. I don't believe. In, no, I mean, you really don't, because you don't believe in life. You don't believe in birth. So it all gets down to that. But yes, Buddha, Jesus, these great souls, they opened doors, windows, took roofs off buildings. We can see all the light coming in. So for us, there's always somebody comes. Every thousand or two thousand years or five thousand years, there's always a great one that is born in our midst. One that leads us to the next level. I'm telling you that we were all those people. Nobody was not Jesus. Nobody was not Buddha. Nobody was not. Sir Lancelot or, or you know, St. Ignatius. Or whatever. We were all, everybody that ever was and ever lived in this dream world is us. So that experience of all those different dreamers, that was only one dream, but all these different things that think they're separate dreams, that's our DNA, spiritual DNA. So all these unified experiences Having to all these billions of souls. It's all us, because it's all God. And that's why we can evolve together. I mean, we choose what part of this puzzle we want to be. I want to be an end piece on this puzzle, right? You know, okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm tired of the rat race. I want to go faster. All right. But ultimately, this, the slowest, least evolved person will eventually reach the same mountaintop that you do and I do. 
And when we all get to that mountaintop, we realize there is no mountaintop. There's no mountain. There was no reaching. We were always there. We were always one. And there's none. It's, it doesn't matter. Wow. Mm. So anyway, that's me yeah. ranting around about the theoretical. I don't know if that had anything to do with the real world. So the people out there listening to this realize that I know that we're all stuck in this real world and there's pain and there's suffering. You're born, you're dead. But I'm telling you that even though you and I and everybody are living that, just because we are living that and experiencing it doesn't make it real. But you can't tell if somebody just lost a son or a daughter or is dying of cancer in great pain, conversation they don't want to hear. Right, but the right. truth of the matter is, if you identify with this body, then you're going to feel that pain. I hope that um, you are going to stick around in the comments when I release this video, because I'm sh I'm quite sure there's going to be some questions and comments that uh, might need to be addressed. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure. What, what do you mean you're denying reality? I mean, who's good? It's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure some people have some really interesting um, questions for you, and I, I think that's healthy and it'll be fun. It'll be a fun discussion. I hope people chime in because you said yeah, a lot of really let me, let me throw, things that I can relate let, to. Let me throw one of those asterisks in here. Yeah. <laughs> had you interviewed me 10 years ago, you wouldn't have had this conversation because I'd be concerned about, oh, people are going to think I'm crazy. No, this is wrong. I, I'm not, you know, people are going to think I'm picking on them because, of, you know. Uh, and now, you know, at 76 years old, and uh, I don't know if I told you, but yesterday I spent uh, negotiating for my cremation for me and my wife. So we're at that age, we're prepaying for cremation. So, so I'm looking at reality. You know what? Frankly, I don't care what you, anybody thinks of me anymore. I'm at a point, I'm going, if I can't speak genuinely what I believe now, then I'll never be able to. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, if you, this is not a, I got your vote. Do you believe in me or not? It doesn't matter. It's thought provoking. I love it. Anyway, John, you, you and I can have multiple discussions on this. We can even, oh, I know. <laughs> maybe, maybe someday we'll do one just straight. We, we didn't even really get it into, into it, but I just don't, you know, no. I don't know how far, <laughs> how much people hey. can take in one, uh, you know, let's so, baby steps. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you I'll, again. I'll leave you with Popeye's words just to haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful, Bill. Keep it up. All right, Bill. Take care. Been great. God bless, God bless you, man. Take it easy. <laughs>